Hi students, it's Miss Andrus, and today we are working on opinion writing. So here is your prompt. It says, opinion writing prompt. Write one to three paragraphs stating which board game you think is the best and why. Use the Oreo outline to organize your work and give evidence from the text. Okay. So that's the prompt. Let's see where to begin. So first thing we always do when we're about to start our opinion writing is we want to do the reading first. We want to read the text first. And as we read, we want to annotate the text. Annotate means you're just kind of like making some notes about your thoughts as you read so that later on you can remember what you were thinking about and what stood out to you when you were reading so that you can include it in your writing. Because if we bring in stuff from the text into our writing, it helps expand our writing. Okay, so here are, here are your um, annotation notes. Um, so if there's a key detail, underline it. If there's an important idea, put a star by it. If you wanna put things in order, like if there's a sequence that you're trying to write about, you can put one, two, three, four, and put the things in order so you can know where the steps are later when you go back and read. You can circle keywords, like if you were like, hey, that's a word I wanna remember, give a little circle around it. If you have questions about things, like you don't know what that word means, or that sentence or paragraph didn't make sense to you, or it made, it like made you think about questions about other things, put question marks near them, and then you can go back and answer those questions later. And then sometimes when you're reading, things really stand out and you're like, oh, that was so cool, or I wanna remember that, or, I don't know where this is gonna fit in my writing, but I wanna remember this because this really stood out to me. You can put little exclamation points or like even if things surprise you, you can put exclamation points and then you uh, later on when you're trying to refer back to, what was it that I read that really stood out to me? You have it in your, um, you have it already annotated or written in your text, okay. So you might have pulled up the article about board games and you might have read that already and it's just an article that says here's a bunch of board games that families play at home you know this board game does this this board game's cool because of that reason this board game requires this or that and um, if you're in the same article as me then these were some of the games that it had in that article uh, telestrations bananagrams Catan, lords of water deep and ticket to ride now, if you don't have the same article as me, because maybe your link wasn't working like mine was not working, then um, you might look up a different article or um, think about some games that you've played for yourself. Maybe you have to make a different list than mine. So like games like Candyland or Uno or Chess or Connect Four or Monopoly. So either way, make a list of games. And here's a little trick for looking things up. If you can't access the same article as me, um, or whatever article your teacher is giving you, you can always just Google your own article because the point of this exercise is to use stuff from the text to write an opinion essay. So it doesn't really matter which article you use. So um, a little trick that I use is sometimes when you just Google something like best board games or articles about board games, um, you might get things that are way above your reading level and then you don't you can't really get anything out of it. So a trick that I use is whatever um, I'm researching, I'll put articles about board games, comma, for kids. And when you put for kids in the search, it usually pops up with a list of articles and things to read that um, are at your reading level. So that might make it easier if you're trying to search for things on your own. But either way, you've now made a list of all these games um, that were either in the article or a different article that you read. And me, and then you wanna put a star next to whichever board game you think is the best, because that's what um, is answering our prompt, which board game is the best. Now I put a star next to the board game Telestrations. So that's the one I chose. You can choose whichever one you want. Now for on, for, on to your next step. The next step is you are going to use the Oreo outline to expand your writing. So sometimes when we start writing our opinion, we're like, I think Telestrations is the best, period. The end. But 
is that a paragraph? No, it's only one sentence. And is that telling me why it's the best? No. Is it giving me any details or reasons? No. Is it giving me any evidence from the text? No. So we want to expand our writing. And instead of having a short little sentence that doesn't give us much information, we want to extend all those ideas out to be a full paragraph. So our Oreo outline can help us with that and keep our writing very organized, okay? So you can use these sentence frames to help you fill out the Oreo outline. This is what Oreo stands for. The O stands for opinion. So in the very beginning, you wanna state what your opinion is. Then the R stands for reason. So you have to give a reason of why, you have to give your because. Why is that game the best? Then you have to back up what you think because somebody reading might not be convinced. So maybe you wanna back up your opinion with an expert or, a, or um, some examples of what you're talking about. So the E can stand for example, and usually we use examples in the lower grades, like third grade and fourth grade. But as we get into fifth grade and beyond, we stop using examples so much and we start using evidence and we use evidence from the text. So if you're a fifth grader or beyond, you should be looking for that text evidence, okay? So I wrote two sentence frames here. So if you're using an example, then you might say, for example, blah, blah, blah. Or if you were doing evidence or text evidence, then you might use this sentence frame. In the text it said, blah, 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 okay? And then finally, at the end of your paragraph, you have to use, um, you have to state your opinion again. So anytime we're doing a concluding sentence, your concluding sentence, no matter what type of writing you're doing, sounds a lot like your topic sentence, except that you kind of say it in different words, but it's basically saying the same thing. So in the beginning, if you said that, this game is the best. In the end, you kind of want to say, and that's why this game is the best. So your sentence frame there could be like, this is one of the reasons why blank. Okay. So this is what your sentence frame would sound like. I think blank is the best game because blank. In the text, it said blank. This is one of the reasons why blank. Now, you can fill that in based on what you read about and what your opinion is. But here is my finished outline with my opinion in it to give you an example, okay? So I will read it to you. I think Telestrations is the best game because it is free and the whole family can play. In the text it said, you only need paper and pencil to play, and the number of players is unlimited. This is one of the reasons why Telestrations is the best game. Okay, so see, I stated what I think. I gave my, re my reason because, in my own words, I backed it up with something that was in the text, in the text it said, and then I restated my opinion at the end so my reader really knew what I thought. All right. Yeah, so this week, that's as far as we're going. We're just outlining. Next week, we will use this outline to finish publishing our paragraph, okay? But for now, you can just stop there. Okay, good luck. Happy writing, and I can't wait to read what you wrote. Have a good one. Bye.